to my computer. Hey guys, welcome back to another interview here on the channel. What is going on? It's the new year. I'm pumped to be back. And today I have a very special guest. Actually, she's one of my friends also and colleagues. Today I'm talking to Carla from Ames Global, which is a, um, I'd say they are an international kind of support group for supporting autistic children by helping and supporting the parents, which is really cool. We're going to go into all of that right now. Let's go. Carla, what's going on? Hi, Dan. Thank you so much. And Happy New Year's to you and your family. Oh, yeah. Happy New Year to you, too. It's been crazy. As everyone can tell, I've moved into a new house and this is my new office, but it's an absolute bomb site at the moment. So it's uh, so I apologize to everybody about the background, but we're here. It's a new year. It kind of rhymed. That's cool. I'm <laughs> wishing everybody has a good 2020 and you, Carla. I hope uh, your new year was great. Thank everything. you. Yeah, no, great. We're just we're pumped to to help more parents. Really. Yes. So as a little bit of a background, guys, I've been um, kind of like working with Kala and, and the team for about, I don't know, I'd say about eight to nine months now, even maybe a year, maybe, I don't know, who knows. Um, and these guys are awesome. They actually have a great backpack out, which I do have, and it's in this box next to me, which I'm going to do a video uh, on my Instagram. So if you haven't already checked out my Instagram, go follow me on Instagram. I will try and do a video uh, on here where I show the backpack as well, but I don't know when it will be, so I can't give you a definite. But if you go and follow me on Instagram, they have a backpack and it's like a sensory backpack made for kids and it's absolutely amazing i actually i really do love it and my son loves it too so that's how we got involved i think because you were like creating products for, for autistic kids which is obviously a huge huge thing that people do need um but since then you guys have moved into like more education learning and training the actual parents and trying to like how can you how can you help the most children uh in the most effective way i think would be a good way to explain it so like you know what concerns do you think that autistic children have sorry what concerns do you think that the parents of autistic children have Carla? like how would you how would you explain this yeah that's a good question i think we've been in the field of autism and related conditions for the last 17 years and i think nanette and i mainly the concerns surround around the child's communication, how they communicate um, their sensory needs, a lot of anxiety issues and, you know, functional communication is a big one. And then also mm. social, social interaction, like how do we get our kids out there to make friends and to learn from their peers? So those concerns, I feel like, are the most important ones. You know, parents sometimes worry about the future. I think that's always in the back of their mind. But yeah. I think the most important thing is to help their child where they are right now. Yeah. Do, would you say that, like, um, that the, uh, the, the kind of, like, making friends, because, like, I, I got a lot of questions about this, right? Do you say that the, this is one of the main concerns, like, making friends is a kind of, like, up there at the top? And is this something that's quite common between all of the parents that you speak to? I think, yes, I think um, making friends in their own way, right? I think parents, um, well, for the most part, parents really want what's best for their kids. So yeah, sure. they don't mind which friends they make. They just want them to be happy. And we've busted that myth a long time ago that autistic people don't want friends. They do want <laughs> friends. Yeah. We just need to to find a way for them to be able to make the friends that they want to, to have in their lives and to have the interest, similar interest involved. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and, and I, I agree. It's not it's not that they can't make friends or that they don't want to make friends. It's just that it's okay. it's the process and how you find those specific friends, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, everybody. <laughs> uh, so kind of what what type of support is available um, and, and when when is this type of support available? So usually when a child is diagnosed, they um, they diagnosed by a pediatrician and the pediatrician will recommend possibly um, a, a number of hours of behavioral therapy, mm. or they will say, okay, let's start with speech therapy or occupational therapy and then see how that goes. Mm. Um, it's quite overwhelming to, to receive a diagnosis as a parent. Um, you know, it's your, it's your child and, and you go through a lot of different emotions. And then on top of that, sorry, yes. No, I just, you know, so you, the say, saying this, um, it reminded me of something I said in my last, last time I was a lot before coronavirus, I was doing a lot of talks and keynotes. And one of the things in my keynotes is I was saying that when parents get this diagnosis for their kid, it's in a very uh, uh, drastic kind of negative environment because it's a hospital or a clinic. And like, nobody goes to a clinic for fun, do they? You know what I mean? It's like, hey, um, I'm, I've been diagnosed with something. That's great. Okay. It never happens. Um, so 
when, but because autism neurological kind of con- uh, developmental condition, it, it's different to kind of like saying, oh, you have a disease or something. So when parents have this environment that is normally negative, when they get the diagnosis, like you said, it's overwhelming. It's kind of like, mm. oh my, there's something wrong. That's that's the that's the key. Is like they think it's something wrong when actually it's something that can be manageable, right? Which is what you're yes. trying to portray. Yes, exactly. And that I don't think that is told to parents in the beginning. I think that we still need to do a lot of work there how we translate that message, how we provide the message of your child's autistic, um, but that doesn't mean that he he or she won't be able to learn, make friends, you know, um, develop um, in, in, in typical ways or in their autistic ways, but, you know, not different to their peers, not that different to their peers. They just yeah. need the right type of support. And I feel like if parents go straight into all of these therapies, it's not just overwhelming for the child, but also for the parents. And, and that sometimes leads into um, issues with relationships, you know, with, yeah. with, the, with the parents' Long-term. relationship yeah. Yeah. And, and also with friends and family members. So I feel like there needs to be a bit of a pause. And what we found is that if parents educate themselves on some of the basics of what they can do themselves, yeah. They don't need to, spend, you know, the other thing is the, the financial aspect of this. They don't need to spend yeah, all this money yeah. on, on all these different therapies. Everyone's getting overwhelmed. We've yeah. seen this. It's a snowball effect. Yeah. So I think that's why we're, we're focusing so much on parent education and, and training. Yeah, and I think like, you know, a lot of it, I'm not saying that there's like scammers out there, but what I'm trying to say is that sometimes you get clinics that have just created so many different programs because obviously they're trying mm-hmm. to stay afloat and above board and they're recommending all things to you. And you think, oh, do I need all of this mm-hmm. stuff? And so yeah. you know, parents kind of sucked into this negative kind of thing. It's overwhelming. You're like, oh, I'm just gonna yeah. buy all this stuff. And and sometimes it's like, have you just wasted money? Like you said, you know, and then that strain on your relationship, you know, the mom and dad mm-hmm. might be like, oh, you know, we've got a financial strain as well as this mm-hmm. kind of emotional strain. It's really interesting. I mean, but above that, like, are there any issues that you see in the current support services that are available? Yeah, I mean, you just highlighted one of them, right? And that's probably the biggest one is that if a parent receives a diagnosis for their child and they are recommended a certain number of hours of therapy, they go to this therapeutic setting and it's the amounts that they're charging are massive. And Mm. now the parent is thinking, okay, well, I need to do this because the professional is recommending this to me but I don't like from the years of experience that I have speaking to professors and autistic adults and advocates like yourself you know that I've learned we've learned Nanette and myself at Ames Global have learned that they don't actually need all this therapy like we can decrease the amount of therapy easily and um, financially sustainable so so to keep things a little bit more affordable because this is not just the one year thing you know your child's autistic for life. He or she, for life. <laughs> yeah. yes exactly so it's, it's kind of like you're optimizing the the uh the support route right so rather than yeah. kind of like you know uh, just like shooting in the dark right you kind of give them a bit more direct um and it, it's really interesting because like you know that the, there are there are so many different people trying to do different things and it's so hard for the parents to kind of like navigate through this and think you know what's what and it's something interesting actually so carla mentioned that you know she'd done you know she obviously done years of research but she's also interviewed a lot of different people so if you want to check out the youtube channel um which most of the interviews are hosted on currently i will leave a link for everything in the description of this video and in the show notes of this podcast so uh, Callie, here's a question like how do you help overcome the issues and, and all the on um, the kind of challenging issues uh, that parents have currently like how do you guys help them so we've got various options. I mean, we do we do have therapists available to to work with the parents in their homes. That that is one of the options that we have. We've also got online therapy therapists available and therapy and then supervision. But the one thing that we really focus on is, like I said, the parent trainings. And at the moment, we're teaching parents how to create an autism friendly environment at home, how to interact with their child uh, successfully and how to increase functional communication. And that leads Uh, then into a decrease in anxiety, because if your child is able to communicate in his or her needs, Um, way you know best way possible then for them their anxiety will decrease automatically yeah Yeah, that's really interesting because I think anxiety is one of the biggest kind of like because you know there's all this other stuff obviously autism causes a lot of issues um but like anxiety seems to be kind of like at the pinnacle of like that that's Mm -hmm. as soon as you have like a 
bulk load of like anxiousness and anxiety, everything else kind of crumbles away. So like, mm-hmm. uh, if you can, if you can hit that and you can kind of attack that mm-hmm. and say, okay, how do we stop this, this worry out? Because anxiety is a worry and worry is a byproduct from something that hasn't happened. So there's a lot of different ways that you can attach it. And I think you're right. You know, if you can hit anxiety and the other things will become a little bit more easy because they're more manageable or they're more optimized. Right. Yes. Um, Sorry. I just wanted to say with that anxiety, it is, it is, so important to to note that if your child is going to therapies that are pushing a child to the point where um you know we were told in one of the one of the training programs that i went through and i went out of was to that we need to break our kids into learning and that is that is horrible for any child so we need to see it from the other point, from the other side, from the, from an autistic person's side and from an autistic child side. And that's what we tried with AIMS Global to do because, you know, we're, we're a holistic form of therapy and we need to focus on the awareness, the interest, the movement and the sensory. And that's why AIMS is called AIMS. <laughs> no, and you know, it's interesting because like, it's not just, it, it's not just a type of therapy or the type of kind of like uh, help and support you offer. It's the people who offer that support. Mm. One of the things I met, you know, you could be like, you know, somebody who doesn't really care about kids, but it's in that role and you know because it's a good job or whatever and they went to college for it and then now they're teaching kids and they're not even that approachable they're not very charismatic but i know you guys very well i know nana mm-hmm. like i know carla like these guys are really nice you know so if, if, if you if anybody was going to be like getting you know some therapy or training or whatever or support from these people you know that it's good because these people care you know that you know nanette's a parent like you guys have you, you know what i mean you're not how can i explain you're not negative or, or you're not in it just for the job you're in it because you want to help people right and this is super yeah. important thank now, you Ames Global, you guys are hosting a live free webinar uh, helping train parents. Tell us about it. Tell us about it and, and let us know what it's all about. Yes, of course. We're very excited about this. The first one is actually coming up this Saturday, the 8th of January. Um, and the times vary, I mean, depending on where you are. So it's 9 a.m. UK time. Um, and we are going to focus on providing parents with practical support strategies. So these are going to include templates that they can print immediately utilize with their child to increase functional communication, collaboration. So working with their child, increasing social skills, increasing um, like coping skills so that the anxiety again can decrease. So it's really on, we, we try to hit all the most important concepts to help the parent and the child and then from there on that provides the parents such a nice solid base that they can they can then increase more of the other stuff that their child might need you know whether it is academics or self-help skills or independent skills interesting so i'm I'm actually gonna i want to i want to join this (laughs) so um how how do people how do people sign up for this free webinar um you know and and what can they expect you know from the sign up process Okay, so we've got a we've got a landing page where they can just um, go to, and I can I can share that link with you. Okay, and they I'll just put it in the description. They, thank you. Yeah, they just need to um, sign up with their email address, and then we will send the the date that they can that they can register for. I think the next one is the weekend after. Well, I know this, the fifteenth of January. Okay. So um, I think our first one is full. Like we we just okay. uh, received a notification that it's full, but the fifteenth of January is for the next one, and there's still some spaces available. But it is free, and we will be sharing all our notes. It's going to be Nanette, Bota, and myself, so the two founders of Ames Global. And we will share everything that we've learned from autistic adults and the professors and everyone, all the speech therapists and the OTs that we work with. So we're very mm-hmm. excited about this. I'm excited. I'm pumped about it. You guys are amazing. Like, and this is something really interesting. Like, I, I know you guys very well and you guys are very well educated, you know, and uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of value in that, to be honest with you, you know, and it's completely free. So if you want to sign up, make sure you do now, like Nanette said, uh, sorry, like Carla said, the first one kind of, I guess is, is full up. But if you sign up, if you use that sign up page, they'll ping you a message. Um, and this is something important. So can people join on their cell phone or the tablet and computer, or is it just computer only? How do they, can they use multi-platforms? Yeah, they can use any any platform to sign up and they can also use any platform to, to join the webinar because it's going to be on Zoom. Okay. Um, so we'll send the link through as soon as they sign up. We'll send through a link um, that they need to follow to to make sure that they attend the, cool. the workshop. 
And for anybody, any technophobes out there who are listening um, and watching, you can enter any Zoom call using a web browser on your phone or your tablet. You don't actually have to have the Zoom app, but it does help. Mm -hmm. So if you want to download Zoom, make an account, that does help. But, you know, don't be afraid of, oh, I don't have Zoom. It doesn't matter. You can just click the link and it just loads in your browser and everything's cool. So, Carla, thank you so much for joining me today. I am super pumped to uh, to join your webinar. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be front front row, but I'm gonna have to go on the, the second one because I've missed the, <laughs> the deadline for the first one. That's how, it, that's how I roll, man. Uh, moving house and all that jazz. So, guys, if you want to be in uh, to check out what Aim School are up to, check out that free webinar, learn some awesome skills. If you're a parent of an assisted kid or anybody who's interested in this, make sure to check out the links in the description down below. I will also leave a link for their social media so you can check out the videos they pump out on Instagram, YouTube, and. Facebook. Facebook. Very cool stuff. These guys are awesome and yours truly uh, recommends. So guys, I'll see you in the next video and I'll see you on the course. Peace. Thank you, Dan.